Okay guys, I'll show you how to do the 2008 to 2013 front brake pad and rotor replacement on the Toyota Highlander. Okay guys, 2008 Toyota Highlander on this one. Removing the wheel to do the front brake pad and rotor replacement. Sometimes uh, the wheels get held on by corrosion. As this one will show you, doesn't come off easily by hand, beating with my hand. So I'm going to put one lug down for safety and use a pry bar to pry it off, which I didn't show, but that's what I did. So now we're going to remove using a 14 millimeter socket to remove the caliper bolts that actually hold the caliper on. And now we're going to use a small pry bar to pry it off, as shown. Pretty easy, and you don't want to let the caliper hang, so now that I have it loose, I'm going to grab my little S-hook, which is great for uh, supporting the calipers against the strut assembly. And you want to make sure it's out of your way for working strength, so I kind of readjust this to put it up against the strut. This gives you access to the brake pads, and there's these tiny clips you got to take off. Which, you will need to reuse these if your kit did not come with new ones. Mine did. Remove the brake pad assemblies. Sometimes this is easier to do on the car, just because you can pry away against the rotor. Instead of fighting it with, uh, with your hands on the bench. Get that other one out of there. Okay, and using a 17 millimeter socket with my impact, I'll be able to take this caliper bracket off. Put the bolt somewhere you won't lose it. And set it on the bench. One thing I always do check for is for stuck caliper slides, which will just screw up your brake job. You gotta make sure you get those fixed. Rotor doesn't come off easy, hit it with a hammer. Break free that rust ring. And it comes right off. Set that out of your way. Now we gotta clean that hub surface. So I've sped up the video a little bit, but you gotta get this thing nice and flat. This is the way you don't have a brake pulsation from rust behind the rotor, cockeye in it. So I use a combination of a little air grinder with a sanding disc. Not too coarse, just getting a nice and getting all that scale off there. And then I'm gonna switch into using my uh, lug, lug stud ring which is an attachment for my drill to get all that corrosion they can't get around the studs as you see here I'll leave a link in the description to this it's a very handy tool make sure your hub surface is nice and clean and I'll kinda of just use it to run along and get all that extra corrosion off the center hub ring as much as you can a wire brush can do this too if you don't have power tools. I spray a little brake parts cleaner just to get all that debris off. Alright, now it's time for the new rotors. We're going to open up the box. Get this tape ring free. And expose your rotor from this plastic bag. Now there is going to be some oil uh, for storage purposes to not have the rotor rust up. You're going to need to clean this off so that way your new brake pads don't get soaked into it. So you am using a little towel and some brake parts cleaner to clean that surface off, any of that oil that's on there. Again, do both sides. I do inside the rotor hat as well just so that doesn't throw it out and get all over your pads later. and put it on your hub. And I'll also use a lug nut just to keep the rotor in place while you're working on it. Now back to the caliper bracket. We're gonna remove these caliper slides and make sure they're all lubed up. Get that rubber boot off them without ripping it. You'll be able to get it out. One of these is gonna have a little rubber ring on it Make sure that one goes in the right place. If they're really corroded up, you need to replace them or use a bench grinder with a wire brush to clean them up and get them smooth again. 
So next step is open your brake pads and make sure they match. As you can see, I walk over, make sure that we look like our old ones. That way I know we're good. Back to the caliper bracket. Now we're gonna take off all these little clips that the caliper, or the pads ride in. Uh, my kit came with new ones. If yours did not, you'll need to reuse these and not rip them off. Just clean them up with a wire brush. But as the kit came with a new one, we're gonna replace them. You can also buy them separately for a small fee, usually like five dollars for both sides from your auto parts store. When you pull them off, I also use a wire brush to clean up any rusty corrosion behind them so it actually gives you the full movement of the pad without having the pad stick inside the bracket. Use a nice rubber wire brush and clean them up. All right, now we're gonna open up our new clips and these do go in a certain way. And I'll kind of show you that here in a second. So the first one right off the bat, you just want to put the uh, long side down towards the rotor. If it was on the car, so you're going to put it in, get it clipped in. You'll have a better visual in just a moment. Mm -hmm. So you can see how that clips in. Now this is what I mean, they only go in one way, so I kind of did this to show you it's backwards. It'll kind of look funny, it doesn't look right, you got that big space on the other side, so you need to replace it going the right direction. And do this with the following other clips. Get them all in place. Then we're going to put a thin coat of uh, caliper brake grease on them. That way the pads always stay nice and lubricated and slide along this without those things rusting up and sticking the pad in place if your car sits for a while. And again, do the caliper slides as well. Make sure those are all lubed up. And as you see, I actually put that one in the wrong side. And I'll notice this in just a second on the video. So that's got that rubber ring. You notice it won't go in the one part. And you're like, if it's fighting you, you know it's not right. Take it back out. Switch them around and they should go in a lot easier. Make sure your rubber things grip onto the slides again that way they're sealed and that part's done. So the next part is we gotta compress the caliper so that they can go back over your new pads. I'm using a special tool uh, it's actually for single piston calipers but if you use the brake pad it'll kinda squish down and push the other caliper piston out but if you keep squeezing it'll force both of them down because it has to go flat. You can also use a C-clip or something else or a uh, C-clamp so now we're going to put the bracket on. Again, your 17 millimeter head bolts. And I'm going to use the impact to put them on. Okay, now we're back to the pads themselves. I always put a thin coating of caliper grease compound on them. This is a, it's not really a grease, it's kind of a silicone compound. But this will keep your brakes from squealing, gives you a little extra protection. And the reason you want to compress your caliper first is when you go to do this, those clips will actually push the pads apart. So you're going to want to make sure that caliper is compressed before the next step, otherwise you'll just be fighting yourself. So we're going to get this brake pad in place. They kind of have a sweet spot they go into. If they're fighting you, you might need to clean up corrosion a little better. Sometimes you just gotta squeeze it up into place inside the bracket. They weren't quite in place all the way. So here's those little spring clips I was talking about. You can see they want to push the pads apart. So you're gonna get your caliper ready. Put that somewhere near where you can quick access it. So I'm kind of make sure you have the brake hose orientated correctly. And you can see how that's springing the pad out right there. So with the caliper supported and ready to go, I'm holding it with my left hand. Well, I'm going to put it in this other clip in with my right hand, and they point towards the center. 
And then with the caliper, once you get it over the pads, the caliper will hold the pads and you can let go and position it in place. Get it over your caliper slides and start to put the bolts back in. Then we're going to tighten them up. Now that they're all tight, it is complete. So, Okay, and to finish it off, put your wheel back on, torque the wheels down with a proper torque wrench, and when your brake system is completely assembled, make sure you press the brake pad multiple times to regain pressure before you move the vehicle. Hey, I'm Joe the Other Guy. Thanks for watching this video. Hope it helped you. Please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+.